calling the meeting to order. Here's the, uh, the statutory warning for everybody. Due to the, oh, uh, I have to wait till Denise has us recording. We are recording. All right. Due to the governor's statewide disaster declaration relating to the COVID-19 pandemic and current public health guidelines for social distancing, I've determined that it is not prudent for the members of the Economic Development Commission or staff to remain in person for this morning's meeting. Therefore, the members of the EDC are attending this meeting by video conference. Those same conditions require barring access to the public for in-person attendance. In light of those limitations, the public is invited to attend and listen to the meeting through Zoom platform or by phone as indicated on the meeting agenda. To comply with the Open Meetings Act requirements for virtual meetings, this morning the meeting is being recorded. So now that we're official, uh, first time of business is the, the minutes of the last meeting, which I know have been circulated and which uh, as, as cleaned up, it looked great to me. Anybody have any input on the minutes from the meeting long, long ago? <laughs> it was yeah. long ago. It's, it's going this place, yeah. Okay, uh, then I'll solicit a motion to approve the minutes. Can I get one? I move we approve the minutes. And a second? I'll second. Thank you. Any opposed? Didn't think so. And it's approved. Uh, then we've got a string of things that uh, are just, some of them are checkups, some of them have some uh, developments. First one is the uh, International Council of Shopping Centers uh, and the Long Grove, uh, historic Long Grove Downtown Business Association. And he, new developments over the new year holiday on those fronts? Uh, not really, but I did circulate the, uh, there was a comprehensive summary of the key COVID relief package provisions that were recently passed by Congress. And I did circulate that. I, you know, I, I think that's a good summary too, Denise, that we can post on the website. Okay. Sounds good. Uh, and we were talking a little bit earlier about this, the, uh, the Sickage website integration, uh, just for the record, how's that going? Um, it was great. It went fine. We had a little bit of a hiccup hearing back from them because of the holidays, but she sent a very substantial list of links to us. Um, and I think Erwin and Denise were on that. So I'm going to deter or defer to the accountants to decide which <laughs> are the best to put on the site. Yeah. So here, here's what I thought uh, I would do. I would go over with Denise and then um, someone should just approve that, that those are the, you know, th that a proper link. So I don't think it's going to be as massive as what they sent, but it'll be something that's very targeted for our uh, community. Okay, so I plan on Denise today or tomorrow, I'll get back to you on that. that Perfect. Good resource. Um, South Gateway TIF, uh, I, I guess it's been approved, is that the status? Yes, it has been approved. There were three ordinances that were approved um, at the December 29th meeting. It was the um, South, South Gateway TIF redevelopment actually plan and project and then designating the TIF uh, project area, and then the adoption of the actual South Gateway TIF. So that was all approved. So if, if we, the, the EDC, have any next steps, I guess it's to consider what we might do to, to let people know about the fact that this is an opportunity that's sitting out there. Um, and I don't, I don't know what the, the village has planned to do beyond passing it at this point in terms of uh, letting developers know that this, this facility is now a potential for development in that area, is that? Well, it just went out in the newsletter, um, the last newsletter, it was the cover um, article. And we already had one response from that, which I forwarded to you, Roger. Yes. Um, but I'm sure that it is on, you know, top of the list, but I think it's probably pretty important to put it some, I'm assuming it's on the EDC website somewhere, right, Denise? I don't know. It would, it would be good to have that information readily available, just like the South 15 
I'm sorry, yeah, I, I was I, muted, Jenny. I it is on the website in several, you know, it's um, one page, but it's linked from several several different places. And then I also my thought was I was working on the it's, I know this is later, but I was working on the two pager yesterday just to update like the number of years that were the businesses because um, you know it's it's behind now a couple of years and then just updating the fact that we have uh, two tips but I thought it might be nice to have an actual because people use it from the website we can put a link on there now to the the South Gateway tip page um, or even both of the because we have two two microsites for each of the um, tips so we can add that on there too if we wanted. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. Does the village do anything in the way of public relations releases uh, or press releases to the industry, so to speak? I know, for example, that uh, title companies in the area have regular publications quarterly, some monthly uh, for Chicago Title that uh, put in little blurbs like that, and I don't know, uh, who one would contact even to get that kind of, is that something that we might That's a good see? idea, Roger. We can work on that. I, I, I can work on that with you, Denise. I think that is a good idea. Now, what would you recommend, Roger, in terms of um, who, we, who we contact about this? I just know there are trade magazines out there. Uh, and I, I know there is at least one regional real estate development publication that is driven by title companies. Uh, my thought is, I, I could do this, I suppose. Uh, Schomburg Public Library has a, uh, they're like the supposedly business publication core for this area, for the consortium of libraries. And they have librarians up there who are very good at being knowledgeable about what kind of trade publications are out there. Uh, it might be worth a call over there and saying, you know, for all we know, there's a, a developer's quarterly or something like that. I, I, I volunteer to do that. Okay, that'd be great. Let, let me throw out another, another thought. Um, just, I, I think we should ask the, uh, at the meeting tonight, just, you know, are there any plans for PR and like the Daily Herald? And I, and I think that um, as we just discussed, we could recommend uh, making contact with, I'll call it the trade magazines, whether it's title companies or the Chicago real estate development uh, uh, magazine, if that makes sense. I just don't want to go beyond the point point or, you know, I, My idea was to present the list of potential places to go to the village or whoever's appropriate. Okay, uh, great. Not, not to generate our own press releases. I. Well, I mean yeah. the board for the board. Right, the board should drive that kind of a thing. Okay, so so Roger, you're saying if 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 we have some contacts or know of some uh, publications, do you want us to send it to Denise so we could review the list in total? Is that uh, why don't you send them to Pam if you can think of yeah. any? Send right. them up to Pam and she can, you know, collect the list and then we can uh, pass it on so that uh, people are aware of those possibilities. Great. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. Um, yeah, and I'll, I'll contact um, the Vernon Library too because they have a uh, they have a business um, de development area and see what they can come up with as well. Right. And um, Albert is uh, orders of magnitude better than any of the local libraries. I, right. Right. What was hey, that? Schomburg is much better than the local. Schomburg. Okay. Yeah. Hey, Pam, the other thing is um, the the shopping center association was IHSC. Just to see if if who they would recommend or if they have um, something they would do for us also. To yeah, that's it. a good idea, Erwin. Since we have that connection already, um, I'll contact them as well to see what they recommend. Great. Good progress. Um, the 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 update on the connect to dynamic Lake County Marketplace infographic. That's pretty much in place, isn't it? Yes, that was the graphic I was just talking about. I'm just doing some minor update updates on it right now. Mm -hmm. um, it was more involved than I thought. I thought it was gonna be a quick thing, but we actually, I don't have the font that they originally used on some of it. So I'm having to change some of that just to update, like I said, the years because um, we're a couple of years behind on it now, how long those particular businesses have been in and then just making, you know, showing that we have two tests now, so. 
Uh, how you do it videos. The, uh, we have one interview scheduled. I ended up talking with Kevin and uh, subject to what everybody else thinks, we came to decide that we were going to do just a one-on-one -on -one interview, uh, not tied to the East, not tied to trying to be from wherever uh, and do it at the convenience of the, the, the interviewed person. So one of the people we talked about before was uh, the Appel Dental Group. And um, I talked to Kevin before Christmas and then things just kind of uh, sat on my to-do pile. But I talked to Lester Appel yesterday, very enthusiastic, uh, very cooperative, uh, we, we tentatively set uh, around lunchtime on Martin Luther King Day, the 18th. I'll send out the Zoom notice and uh, let people on the EDC know if they want to dial in and see what's going on. Uh, but, uh, you know, Lester's comment that I liked was, you should definitely talk to me because, man, I get so much business here in Long Grove. I don't know what to do. I can, you know, so very positive about the business environment here. Yeah. Can't hurt oh, that's fight. great. Yeah, that's great. So there, there were some others we talked about, uh, but since, you know, it's, it's, since it's Kevin's time, um, I guess Skycrest might be the next one. But. Yeah, I talked to Chris, I sent an email to Kristen um, and she's, her comment was, why didn't you ask me last year when I was super fit right, instead of after COVID 2020? <laughs> <laughs> Stop it, you look gorgeous. So um, she was gonna look at the links, but she was, um, she seemed um, I'm gonna... So um, I'm gonna, she's kind of, she, she's kind of dealing with a lot right now. So um, the next couple of weeks, she's her favorite or her beloved dog is not doing well. So she's kind of um, dealing with a lot emotionally, but she seems in the future would be interested in doing it, so. Kevin mentioned that he feels that uh, having the person being interviewed with a good internet connection uh, makes a big difference. Yeah, that was really clear with the White Oaks crowd. Yeah, yeah. So, you, you know, ask her what the situation is. And uh, maybe it's like uh, Appel said, oh, our, our best connection is definitely here at the office. And it, yeah, for the obvious reason, he has all these medical records that come in with right. and whatever stuff. So anyway, that's going forward. Um, let, me, let me bring you up to date. I did email uh, Stephen uh, Wang at uh, MAT Holdings. Haven't heard back yet. I think the next uh, uh, one is a call. And um, I'll update everyone next uh, next month. Yeah, that would be an interesting one. I, you know, right. I mean, right. All right. Um, there's this flow chart. Um, I was, Roger, I was also, as we have um, Mr. Demarski on the phone, I mean, Jake might be, um, Jake Weiss might be an interesting person because he's, you know, he's been watching that CFI property a long time and kind of, you know, he might be. Interview about why did you choose this yeah. place to develop and throw your capital in this project? Yeah. Right, yeah. I mean, he's pretty excited about being here, so. That sounds good to me. Sounds real good. Yeah, that's certainly something I think he'd be open to. Great, I will send him an email. Okay. Um, any any input on the round of phone calls to long world businesses? Um, I have to admit, I dropped the ball on that in the last meeting. We had kind of a meaty uh, and. I I had a lot to talk about and that fell off the back of the plate. So um, I don't know, Denise, have you had any conversations with Bobby about making co phone calls or? But I can bring it up tonight, so. There's, I don't sense that we're all dying to spend time <laughs> phone calling, but uh, if somebody feels it's worthwhile, 
Denny, I want I apologize. My internet froze, so I couldn't unmute myself. <laughs> so, um, no, I have not heard anything. Um, Bobby and I have not discussed that. We didn't have a newsletter meeting there. Um, an in between, there was there was like we almost had a month off. So I have not talked to her. Okay, I'll bring it up tonight at the meeting. <laughs> Could I just bring it up to the, right now? Is is this beneficial to us to make calls? Our, I know I spent a lot of time trying to chase people down. And uh, I'm not sure what the benefit is versus pushing people to our website and including something in the you know village newsletter. Uh, I'm just not sure it's worth the time. So I'll throw that out. Yeah, to I mean, I, I, I agree with you, Erwin, that I think at least we should make sure we put something in the newsletter or possibly even just send an update to the businesses, you know, just a an update on activities, you know, that type of thing. Um, maybe just just a blast email might be a good way to get, you know, get everybody's attention without having to track, you know, track down people with these phone calls. I I think it was beneficial on the first round because we, you know, it was a very important time to to connect with people and. You know, we did make that very first important introduction, but I don't know. I, I I would think at least in a minimum, maybe quarterly updates through an email blast might be a good way to do it. I thought I thought we discussed last month uh, maybe a what our accomplishments were. In right. Right. Uh, and I and I think we made a lot of progress, and we could even put in there goals for twenty twenty one. You know promoting the TIF, whatever it may be. Uh, I think that'd be more beneficial than the one-on-one -on -one calls. That's my opinion. Yeah, I kind of agree with that, but you know, we can we can uh, see what people think when, when you talk to the board, Jenny. But I, I like that idea because it's pretty comprehensive in terms of what we're doing and some, you know, we could, we could bring in some, um, you know, like Erwin's saying, what's going on with the TIF, it's just some important information that we're also conveying at the same time. I concur. So, yeah, so me, I agree. Yeah. I don't think we need to, I, I mean, if we don't even have to bring it up with the board, I mean, I, I, I don't think it's necessary that we do this because half of our EDC at the time, and, and we're down in numbers, didn't even participate and didn't even make any calls or they tried to make calls, but they couldn't come through. And so it was a lot, it was many hours wasted, hate to say wasted on our time, just trying to track people down. So those that did, I mean, I'd say it wasn't wasted in the efforts that those that did pick up were very um, grateful that we called or that someone in the village cared. And I think that was the main thing. I think to do it twice, I think is unnecessary personally. Um, but I mean, unless we had something to offer them other than just our moral support. But I think if, it, if you can, you can do that in a newsletter. I mean, my personal opinion. I have a tendency to agree to you. I, I mean, I don't even answer the phone if I don't recognize the number. So. Um, You're missing out on all those extended car warranties and all those. <laughs> <laughs> I actually got rid of my landline because 99.9% .9 of the calls. Yeah. yeah. Craziness. So. Yeah, I think we're all pretty much in agreement that uh, unless somebody in the village says, please, please help us, we're just going to sit on our hands and okay. do well. Yeah, do, do, and, and the newsletter, like Erwin was saying, is a good idea oh, yeah. because it kind of um, like briefs people on what's going on. And, you know, we can include other, um, we can include other uh, possible, you know, um, summaries or, or information that we've received from different um, sources as well as you know what's going on with the TIF and some other things that kind of brings people up to date at the same time. So we're really accomplishing a couple of things, you know, rather than um, you know just uh, trying to track people down. So I think it's, I think it's a good idea. Don't we already do that just with the villages newsletter? And I mean, isn't that kind of what the villages like email blasts are i mean just updates are you saying that we should have a separate edc newsletter i'm thinking that um no so it doesn't have to be that i mean i'm just thinking like who's going to take the time i mean i'm sorry I, I can't i don't have any more time on my plate to do to coordinate well, i'm thinking there. maybe it goes to the businesses no, no, no okay like, but who's going to write it like who's going to you know 
I think just logistically, I think it's a great idea, but I think we kind of cover, I'm trying not to be redundant with stuff that we do that the village already does, you know, so. I was, I was gonna say, Mina, that we did in the last print newsletter, there is a whole section on the, that it's actually the yeah. EC is discussed and they talk about the TIF. And so exactly. I, I understand what you're saying that it would, it could be redundant because there is, I think the, there, there is a lot going out there already. And I think at some point in time, we will start to get like, it's just going to be another one you swipe left. You know, if, if there's too many things coming from Long Grove, people are just going to not read them because now they're getting inundated in their inboxes, which we already get tons of spam. So my personal opinion is this, if it's already in the newsletter, which Denise, I did read, um, I think we're going to be redundant. I mean, but quarterly, we should put something from the EDC, I agree, into the newsletter, you know. Maybe yeah, I think newsletter, but that, that's a good idea. I mean, I, maybe what we can do is work with Denise and, you know, just make sure we look through, you know, what we want to convey about what the EDC is doing on a quarterly basis and it can go in the newsletter. Yeah, and I think because Denise, we put so much on Denise's plate already that I just feel like she would be the one that would get stuck with this, you know, this writing, this newsletter business that she, so I, I'm trying to be mindful of Denise's time. Um, as well as, you know, again, not being repetitive. So thank you, Denise, anyway, <laughs> and thank you all. <laughs> well, I don't mind working with you, Denise. I'll, you know, I'll-, I'll at the PR firm that they're already paying to do that kind of stuff and to build the bridge newsletter. So uh, we have plenty of substantive things to work on without, you know, kicking that around. I agree with, with Nina and, uh, Bobby is always asking, what can I put, you know, she's always looking for material. So if we have something that we think should be in there, let's should put out there, yeah. Yeah, okay. and I was gonna say that we always meet the day after the board meeting, we meet with Bob, Bobby and Vicarious. So if there's anything that you would, you would like included in there, just let me know and I can, you know, add that to the list. Okay. Um, uh, next item on the agenda is the, the drone video. This is, I'm really happy to talk about this now. Uh, thanks to the dynamic duo of Trusty Kitzmeyer and Trusty. Uh, Michelle. Uh, yeah, Michelle. Uh, we, have, we have a really great start on, uh, on a video for uh, the video. I think it can be used lots of different ways. Uh, Jenny, why don't you tell them how it uh, came to be? And uh, well, I think actually Bobby O'Reilly sent me that link, and we found out. That, you know, we all decided 150 was reasonable. Uh, I didn't realize they'd really substantially cut their prices for us. Uh, I did kind of say, you know, this is for a municipal project, and they, I mean, they gave us two. They usually charge 260 for this. So, um, and. I was kind of, or Anne, Mina and I walked through the village kind of talking about what views we wanted to hit, um, what time of day we talked to a couple of the business owners trying to find out when are you the most busy. Um, I also made a bunch of calls to the businesses letting them know that we were gonna do this. Um, and then I just kind of watched the weather <laughs> and looked for a weekend with snow, fresh snow. And I actually reached out to them New Year's Day and I said, I'm looking at the weather. We're going to have fresh snow on a Saturday night. Is there any chance that you could meet me? And they got back to me and they said, sure. So Anne and I, um, unfortunately, Mina wasn't able to join us, but we met um, Maria downtown. She was really nice and she walked through it with us. And we kind of tried to hit the end of the day so we could get, um, you know, day to night or open both. Um, and we wanted to kind of highlight the fires with the, the dusk and I think it turned out really well I there are I think some portions of the drone video that should be edited um, unfortunately we didn't hit every business but we were fighting daylight and we had to be out of there before dark um, but I think it's a great stepping stone um, and um, Roger pointed out about getting uh, copyrights to the film so we can share that with the businesses and allow them to use it, which um, Mike Marr from Buffalo Creek Brewing was really interested in his little snippet. And I think some of the others would also be really interested. Um, 
and Anne and Mina are going to be mating with Steven, some teachers at Stevenson to talk with some of the students and that might be a project that they take on kind of cleaning that up. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm thrilled. I think it's a, a, a great place to start. I, um, kudos for sure yeah. to Jenny and Anne because I think the video again looks great. And I think, you know, it was brilliant to do it with Fresh Snow. I mean, absolutely brilliant. So um, I know that that is something that um, Anne has a very good agenda for later to talk with the Stevenson team. But um, it's going to be, I think, very fascinating and fun. Um, but I think we're also doing some, we're going to talk to them about some other EDC related marketing efforts that we want to do um, as that, you know, as part of our um, missions, mission statements. Um, so that is something that we are. But yeah, kudos. The drone looks great, but I think it's going to look even better when it's done. Yes. I, I just would love to see the when you click the long rove link to have it open up with somebody zooming into that bridge from a uh, height and see, it looks like such a nice, small, quaint little place. The lighting <laughs> is like, it, 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 you know, we know that just beyond the horizon, there are suburban sprawl all over the place, but it looks very quaint, very comfortable, very cozy, you know. Uh, it just is a great promotion piece, I think. And uh, the problem now is to get it out there to the right places and, uh, that's apparently the next steps are being taken. Yes, yes. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I think it would be great to um, bring it to the next. I mean, I, um, once we get the copyright ownership of it, I think if we could take it to the business district and share it with them and kind of offer it up, you know, use this how, you know, you can use it in total if you want to clip it. Um, but I think sharing it and allowing everybody to take advantage of it. But yeah, I would love to see it on the, the website as soon as we kind of have it cleaned up a little bit. I, I, I think you ought to show it to the village board tonight. I don't know how bad the agenda is, but. Oh, that's a good idea. I don't know. Um, I mean, it'd be a fun little respite all to all the yeah, uh, serious. Um, what I was, I, I kind of tried. Jenny, this is this is Anne. I can help try and make that happen if Denise can help. I don't know if Denise is on tonight or not. Um, that yes, would be, I can help with that. If you guys can worry, I mean, like I said, after, right after this meeting, I'm hopping in a car. So if you guys could figure out how to do that tonight, that would be great. Sounds good. Okie dokie. All right. Well, that's, that is excellent. Anything else on the... Uh... Okay, the next item on the agenda is um, one of our guests, Matt Quinn, who is out there somewhere. Yes. Yes. Hey, Roger. Good morning. Good morning. How are you doing? Doing well by yourself. Yeah, <clears throat> Matt Quinn is here. He's the uh, communications director for the Illinois Restaurant Association. And he's been kind enough to agree to come to our meeting here and share information regarding what the uh, Illinois Restaurant Association is working on on behalf of our restaurant community. And he's already shared quite a bit of information, which I've distributed um, a summary of the recent COVID relief package. And uh, there's a number of webinars that the Illinois Restaurant Association has been putting on, but I'll let Matt talk about that. Great, thanks, Pam. Thanks, Roger. Uh, good morning, everyone. Thanks for thanks for having me today. Um, as Pam said, I'm Matt Quinn. I'm the Assistant Director of Government Relations and Communications with the Illinois Restaurant Association. Appreciate the opportunity to speak to, to, to everyone today. Uh, in my role at the IRA, I help uh, direct our efforts to promote, protect, educate, and advance the state of Illinois' restaurant and hospitality industry. Uh, we have a dedicated team that, that's really 100% focused on providing support, guidance, and relief to, to everyone in the hospitality industry, restaurants, bars, caterers, food trucks, really everyone in between, uh, regardless whether or not they're, they're members of our association. So before the COVID-19 crisis began, uh, our association represented the largest private sector employer in the state with 594,000 people employed uh, at more that at, at more than 24,000 eating and drinking establishments across Illinois. Uh, speaking in the past tense, because, you know, as all of you know, the, 
the industry has been absolutely devastated by COVID-19. Uh, we were really the first ones to close and in all likelihood are going to be the last industry to fully uh, open and recover. Even before this latest shutdown in November, 78% of Illinois operators uh, said that they don't expect their sales to return to pre-COVID levels within the next six months. Eating and drinking places in Illinois lost 31,000 jobs in November, the most of any state in the country, and three times as many as the next closest state. Sadly, we estimate that if business conditions continue, at least 20% of Illinois restaurants will never reopen. So the most important factor uh, that will really determine the success or failure of restaurants is, is how many guests they're allowed to serve on a daily basis. So this is why the IRA has been advocating for the governor to allow for limited indoor dining uh, during ongoing mitigations that we've uh, been in since November. You know, we really need to see a reasonable path forward in Illinois with some pragmatic regulations that allow for some limited safe indoor dining that will really maintain public health without destroying people's businesses and livelihoods. Um, We've already supported, I'm sorry, we, we've, we've really always supported limited indoor dining with extensive safety measures in place. Uh, we've been calling on the governor to bring us to the table to find solutions, uh, whether that's, you know, reduced occupancy, curfews, um, other, other uh, um, regulations in place to allow for some responsible uh, indoor service. You know, restaurants have really done everything asked of them to keep diners and team members safe. Um, you know, we, we recognize that the pandemic is not going away in the near term. Safety measures such as PPE, masks, so, social distancing, sanitizing, and more are, are really absolutely essential. We totally support and, and understand that. We're going to be launching a new call to action campaign later this week. I'll be, share, I'll, I'll be sure to share with uh, Roger and Pam so Long Grove restaurants and bars uh, can, can be engaged. We've also laid out uh, for the governor a set of legislative and regulatory measures that would help the restaurant industry, uh, which, as I said, is our, is our state's largest private sector employer. We called on the state to streamline the business interruption grant program if and when new money becomes available for that program, to expand sales tax relief, cap third-party delivery fees, ease liquor payment regulations, delay the state's minimum wage increase, and more. Again, you know, our, our Restaurant and hospitality industry has lost more jobs in November than anywhere else in the country. So we really need uh, everything to be on the table to support the, the hospitality community. Locally, we were able to pass uh, an ordinance in the city of Chicago to cap fees that third party delivery services can charge onto restaurants. We encourage uh, lo local municipalities to adopt similar measures. And we're also pursuing a bill at the state level that would cap those fees as well. At the federal level, we've seen some positive developments in the latest relief package. Definitely a good start and a solid down payment on more targeted relief for the restaurant industry. Restaurants have really gotten several wins here in the latest relief package with another round of PPP, more flexibility and covered PPP costs, enhanced employee retention tax credits, business meal deductions, and more. For months, the IRA has been working nonstop along with our members, uh, the National Restaurant Association, and our counterparts in other states to get uh, additional relief from the federal government. Our industry really still needs direct federal relief in the form of the $120 billion Restaurants Act for restaurants, bars, caterers, and other hospitality businesses. Uh, and that's something we're going to continue to fight for uh, in, in 2021 and the new administration and new Congress. So, you know, we appreciate that Congress has finally got something else done for, for that benefits restaurants that are in serious trouble. Um, but we're continuing to fight for that dedicated relief fund for, for restaurants like, like other industries, like the airlines, auto industry, banking ha have gotten in the past. As I mentioned, you know, we continue to fight for that uh, dedicated relief fund at the federal level. We've also, uh, as, as Pam noted, I believe um, she shared with you our, our breakdown from the National Restaurant Association of the new uh, federal relief package, what it means for restaurants. And uh, I'd encourage you to review that and you know, share it with you, your local restaurants and bars as the package is rolled out in the coming weeks. Throughout COVID, we've hosted uh, regular webinars for restaurant food service operators on a variety of subjects uh, to help them really sustain and, and grow their operations. We said that we bring two to three experts on our uh, per webinar for 60 minute programs, uh, and we have all of them available for viewing on our website at IllinoisRestaurants.org. 
some of the recent topics we've included are navigating real estate concerns, employee support resources, new revenue streams, cost saving solutions, outdoor dining design, marketing strategies, things like that um, are all available on our website. So please feel free to check them out anytime and share it with your local restaurants. Yeah, There's many, you know. Oh, a question. Oh yeah, go ahead. Mm -hmm. In Long Grove, there are just a handful of restaurants in the downtown area, mm -hmm. uh, none of which have had to go out of business. Uh, anecdotally, several have said that they're doing okay with the carryout business. You, why is my real question. Uh, is there something about the, the nature of the, the demographics around here or something else that would say that and I'm asking this in part because we're trying to promote Long Grove as a place to open businesses. And I'm trying to get, is there something about this business that it may, would make it very attractive for restaurateurs in the sense that our guys survived the COVID pandemic? Any thoughts on that? Sure. I mean, well, first of all, I mean, that, that's, that's great news for, for Long Grove restaurants. I mean, the, the vast majority of, uh, of places throughout the country and certainly throughout the state are, are not doing that well. Right. You know, sales, are, sales are typically down, you know, 70 to 80%. Uh, I think, it, you know, it, it, it depends on uh, what type of restaurants you have in the area. What, you, what are they set up? Uh, how are they set up? What are they design, designed for? Uh, if your restaurants were, you know, um, set up for a significant takeout and delivery business beforehand, you know, it sounds like they've been able to really pivot or, or amplify that part of their business. Uh, I, you know, different kinds of cuisine, you know, do a little better when it comes to delivery and takeout, of course. Uh, and I think that's, you know, really just probably a testament to, to the area and the community, you know, that, that um, you know, residents and uh, folks nearby are still, you know, patronizing their, their favorite restaurants uh, during, you know, the, the hardest 10 months that they probably ever faced. So, um, probably, you know, a good combination of, of factors that are working in your favor. And certainly if, you know, when you're attracting new businesses and, and things like that, you know, using that information and, and, you know, survey data from your restaurants will definitely be, be helpful in, in, you know, bringing restaurants to your area. Thanks. This is Ann Kutzmeyer. I listened to a podcast with Cranes and Nick Kakonis. Uh, mm -hmm. on the current restaurant. I don't know if you saw that as well, but one of the things they also talked about was the ability to pivot using information. Is that something that um, your group, your association is helping to facilitate? I don't think everybody's got the same resources as Nick Kakonis. What, you know, what else can they do? And how might we help them facilitate that kind of better relationship with their customers to stay open and thrive? Sure. You know, I don't... Um... I did listen to a recent uh, kind of year in review from Cranes. I, I don't, I don't know if I heard the part with Nick Kakonis, but I imagine he was probably talking about information related to delivery services. Is that correct? It was delivery services and also knowing your customers so that you can continue to reach out. I think, I think he was, what he was indicating was the ability to reach out was important for them to, you know, be able to pivot well and, and, you know, do as well as they can, I guess, during the, the last several months. Yeah, I think, um, and as Nick probably said, he, he's really been, um, you know, a, a pioneer when it comes to creating alternate options for delivery services. He's created his own uh, platform called Talk, which many of you, you know, may be familiar with or, or have used. But um, I think that, you know, that's a really important uh, part in all of this. And, and one of the, uh, you know, many issues that restaurants have with, third-party delivery services, one of which is, you know, the sharing of customer information along with, you know, fees and, and you know, listing restaurants um, without their consents and, and having a, a contract and an agreement with restaurants and, and all sorts of things that um, have really been building for a long time and have uh, been, you know, these issues have amplified throughout the pandemic. Um, so that's one, you know, one such issue that we continue to work on and, you know, we're, um, as I mentioned, we you know passed an ordinance in Chicago to cap delivery fees, which was a great step in the right direction. We're looking at additional legislation at the, at the state level uh, that would do that as well. But that's one of the other issues that you know is always top of mind to make sure that um, you know there there's honesty and transparency between delivery services and restaurants, and 
one aspect of that is, you know, the sharing of customer information because, you know, you want to be able to, as Nick probably said, you want to be able to communicate with these, um, you know, with this network of people that are, um, that are patronizing your restaurant over the past several months. And if you're have more heavily reliant on, on um, delivery and takeout, you want to make sure that you're building that good, you know, customer database, that database uh, for your business. Thank you. And, and mm -hmm. I guess, like, so what you said is that the association is doing a lot to help on the, on the fee basis and also enable those conversations. Is there anything you'd suggest to municipalities that we might be able to do? Sure. I mean, I can share with you uh, the legislation from the city of Chicago that we just passed in addition to um, a, just for reference, also um, the, some of the ordinances that have passed around the country in different municipalities uh, related to, you know, delivery fees. Um, each, each place around the country has, has addressed the issue a little bit differently, but that's really the core uh, of every piece of legislation is, is, you know, setting some guardrails, some, some reasonable guardrails in place for those uh, delivery fees. And um, I'm glad to have any conversations w with you guys about uh, exploring those, um, those regulations. Okay, thanks. Mm -hmm. Any other yeah, questions yeah. right now? Otherwise, I'll just I'll uh, I just said a few more things and then I can I can take of course take more questions as well. Sure. So just a, a few other notes when we're talking kind of about different uh, support resources. Uh, I'm sure many of you are familiar and, and your local businesses applied for uh, the state's business interruption grant program, which closed applications a few weeks ago. Um, we've seen some issues with you know with communication and how the grants were distributed. We've uh, we, we actually just talked to the, to the state and DCEO last week about the program and how it needs to be uh, improved if more funding becomes available. So, you know, we're going to keep that keep that communication open. The IRA also has our uh, the our Educational Foundation Employee Relief Fund, which is offering five hundred dollar grants to employees impacted by COVID. Uh, so please, you know, check out our website refer your folks uh, to apply. Uh, for those 500 grant 500 dollar grants for restaurant and, and hospitality industry employees that have that they or their families have have been impacted by COVID. One other note, I, you, you you may have seen that uh, there's an organization, the Southern Smoke Foundation has a uh, Chicago Restaurant Workers Relief Fund, uh, but that's available to anyone uh, in Cook County. So if any of your folks work or live uh, in the area. Um, Southern Smoke Foundation also has $3.6 million remaining in a fund for those hospitality workers in need. Uh, so I'd encourage any restaurant and bar team members uh, to visit their website at southernsmoke.org to learn more and apply. So uh, just I'll wrap up and, and you want all of you to know that the IRA is here as a resource to you 24-7. Uh, you know, member or non-member, your, your local restaurants and bars, we're, we're really here to serve. So. Uh, know that you know we're we're available and always ready to help. So thanks for thanks for having me today. Glad to take take any other questions. Oh, and ben, um, ben, we really appreciate that uh, the information you've given. I I I think it would be helpful if you if you could share with us or share with me after the meeting. You know some of your um, recommendations in terms of legislation. You know that we could maybe adopt, you know, or, or try to adopt from um, what's been done in Chicago. That would be really helpful, Matt. Absolutely. Um, and Matt, thanks for joining us today. But um, so how is your uh, legislative push going with regard to the minimum wage um, or pushing that off? Because obviously that's really going to impact the payroll of all the restaurants that are still alive. Um, have you seen yeah. a lot of pushback, I'm assuming? There is, yeah. That's um, you know that that's that's probably going to be the toughest sledding for, for us to try to uh, to get that to be delayed. You know, we um, it, it's 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 we're not holding our breath for that. But you know, it's it's on a, a long legislative list of, of asks that we've put forward. Uh, I will. Um, I don't know if I shared that with, with Pan Roger, but we actually are in our last letter to the governor. We laid out you know a series of different regulatory and, and legislative relief measures that the state should take in order to help. Our restaurants and bars right now and, and you know that was one one piece that's included but i will share um those other issues that we're working on with with you guys as well what is the one thing that i think would help you the most i mean just i know obviously there's a whole laundry list but i think if you had you know the magic wand and you could pick one out of everything what would you i mean what i think you know what would you pick or what would you do or what would you want passed 
I mean, it's really, it's really just about occupancy and indoor dining, you know, any level right now, because, you know, er everything else uh, that we can work on is really just kind of nibbling around the edges when, you know, you can't, no one built their, their, uh, their business plan on 0% occupancy or even 25% or even 50%, you know, so that just, it, it, it's really a nightmare to try to make the numbers work. Um, on a long time basis, you know, we were glad to see that, you know, there's another round of PPP and that there's more flexibility and things that are helping restaurants there. But um, as long as restaurants are closed for, for, you know, indoor service, there's really not a whole lot of options. So I think if we can get, find that path to get some, some level of limited indoor dining as soon as possible during mitigations, because, you know, right now all regions of the state are harboring at about, 10% uh, positivity and they need to get below 6.5% for three straight days. And fortunately we don't know how soon or, or long that that is going to take. Um, so we really want to have a, you know, have a target in place that would allow for limited indoor dining, say, you know, in tier one right now, we're most places or actually all places are still in tier three of mitigation. Um, we just want to, you know, give people a target to hit and give them some hope because right now restaurants are kind of just sitting on their hands and waiting because they, they can't open like everyone else. And even as mitigations relax, restaurants and bars are still completely restricted. Unlike other businesses, they're the only industry that is still totally shut down for indoor service, you know? So um, we're really advocating that the state change course in, uh, you know, tweak their plan to, to allow for some limited indoor dining. That's kind of the number, the, it's definitely the number one thing that, you know, is going to determine the success or failure of, of, of your restaurants and bars right now. Thank you. Thank you, Matt. That was appreciated as always. Um, the people around here know that uh, the restaurant association is trying and, uh, will be supportive of the legislative effort as well, I believe. Uh, but mostly you know, the, having you here keeps us informed and uh, able to talk through these issues with more than just uh, what we read in the newspapers. So that's really, I think, worthwhile and appreciated. Anybody? Anytime, glad to else? be here. Okay. Thank you so much again. Um, the, the next item on the agenda is to talk Thanks, about. Uh, Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Matt. Thank you. Roger. So, uh, so um, the next two uh, presentation will be from the um, Mr. Demarski and Mr. Conroy, who. Um, Demarski, Mr. Demarski works with um, Jake Weiss, who purchased re the reserve. Um, Roger and I were fortunate enough to go on a tour. And, oh, and Mr. Harris is here as well. Thank you for joining us. Um, and we had some great conversations on the tour and I thought it would be great for them to join us at our meeting and talk about kind of their vision. And also I think they wanna hear from us what we're kind of looking for. Um, so I'm going to let them introduce themselves because they'll do that better than I will. And thank you so much for coming so early on a Tuesday morning. Hi, good morning, guys. Um, I guess I'll, I'll kick it off. I'm Avi Demarski, uh, Director of Operations at Weiss Properties. Uh, we are uh, pretty much the real estate development group that bought the property and, and kind of has the big plans to redevelop the property and make it a fantastic, viable part of the community. Um, and then we have brought along Kali Chicago, and that's David Conroy and, and Justin over here um, to represent us to do basically all the leasing efforts as the landlord representation. Um, so I'm going to kind of pass along the mic to them and, and have them talk a little more about the property, but just definitely want to convey um, we're thrilled. I mean, we are super excited to have, you know, I know this property has been kind of a troublesome, you know, almost an eyesore for many years. And just, you know, I guess a brief background of what we do at Weiss Properties is we'll buy buildings that people have overlooked and people, you know, they've been sitting vacant for many years and no one can figure out what to do with them. And kind of our specialty is to find those gems that other people might not notice, go in there, buy it and really spend a lot of time, energy and money turning them around. 
to the point where we're super proud of the final product, you know, the local community is and kind of benefits the, the local and greater economy, brings jobs to the areas and kind of is a win-win for everyone. So this is a project we're really excited about. Um, and I think that there's a lot of good stuff ahead. Uh, so I'm just going to pass the, the buck over to David and Justin. I'm David Conroy with uh, Cauley Chicago. So we're on the brokerage end of the property. I think what I want to do to start, we actually have a, a kind of a cool video we put together. I'm just going to show you the social media trailer um, since it's a little shorter. And then uh, anything related to the property, a good place to send people or look for more information is sales.com. Uh, there will be a longer version of this video there too. Um, oh, it looks like I can't screen share. Um, we do fix that. Um, Denise, can you uh, add him, share his screen? Yeah, just added him as co-host. So you should be able to share now. There you go. Okay. Perfect. There. Um, So uh, pretty, pretty simple video. Um, just there's a, again, there's a longer version of this. You can uh, refer people to as well online um, at salemlake.com. There's a lot of information on the property. So we're looking for some help, just kind of getting the word out to the community that the property is uh, revitalized right now. Um, and that we're trying to bring it back to its, you know, condition it was when CF Industries was in there. I mean, it's a beautiful brick and timber loft great balconies overlooking the lake. I know uh, Jennifer and a couple other people from the city uh, as well came out to see the property. Uh, we want to extend an invitation as well to anybody else on the EDC or uh, really anyone at the village that wants to take a look. We're happy to tour you through it right now. Uh, Avi and his team are really working through getting the spec suites ready to go, kind of clearing out the property as there's a lot of broken glass, a little bit of vandalism, just which is you know, typical when a, a property sits vacant for, for a while. So um, the plan is to make it into an office building. So we're targeting both um, off, typical office users. And, and then also we're looking at people kind of uh, along the healthcare medical route. I think we're looking at some unique uses as well. avi has got a lead on a guy who could be in an amenity and rent some basement space to do like an archery school. Um, you know, we're also looking to do, uh, use that guard shack up front of the property. Perhaps we can turn that into some sort of either, um, you know, a coffee shop or move a coffee shop into the building with a food service as there's a nice kitchen down there as well. Um, any sort of event company, I know that's probably a, a difficult business right now, but anybody getting up and, and going, feeling like in 2021, now that we've got a vaccine and are hopefully moving in the right direction and things get up and running. Um, you know, I think event spaces would be great as it's, it's beautiful overlooking the lake here too. So um, we're actually having an event out here just to kind of bring public awareness and have something fun to do with the, the city. Um, I know, I think I sent the flyer to the village uh, president and he was going to include it in the e-blast, but um, we've got, I could flip you guys the brochure as well. Um, it is the last Saturday and Sunday uh, of January, so the last two weeks, so the 23rd to 24th, and then the 30th to the 31st. So the plan is um, we're actually going to freeze a portion of the parking lot out there uh, to do some ice skating. So um, we've had some difficulty sourcing skate rentals, so the idea is to have everybody bring their own ice skates with them. Um, and then we're going to have some refreshments. Uh, Weiss actually has a food truck that they use. So we'll have some food, hot chocolate. We've kind of got um, uh, branded uh, hot chocolate cups as well with a reserve logo. So very similar to kind of what I'm wearing right here is this is the logo we're using for the property. So you'll see this a lot. There will be some banners leading up to it, um, kind of directing everybody where to go plan would be to do a bonfire and then a real cool thing. Um, and Avi might be able to give you some more details on this because I haven't seen it, but 
Um, Jake also owns a fire truck that they've used for different parades and things like that. Um, so we're going to do some fire trucks rides as well. Kind of like, you know, you would see at an old, uh, you know, country fair, sort of those hay rides. That's sort of our own version of that. So um, I've seen a lot of pictures of the fire truck, but I've never seen it in person. Um, so any, Justin, anything you want to add or Avi as well to the, to the event coming up? I mean, we, one of the things we really want help with is um, methods to kind of get it out to the local community in Long Grove because our, uh, you know, it's really a twofold um, thing we're trying to accomplish. One is we want to do something for the village, the community. Two, we really want to get it back onto everybody's mind since it's been sitting and, and people tend to forget about properties that sit that, you know, there's work being done, um, you know, get back out there. There's a new owner. We're going to reposition the property uh, and really do a high class uh, build out because Weiss has done a great job uh, to Abby's point, re revitalizing properties over the years, taking something that's, you know, uh, vacant and then putting, a, you know, a lot of money and work into it and sweat equity uh, and making sure that the, uh, you know, the finishes are very high end and it's built out. So we can have tenants anywhere from 7,000 square feet up to the entire building. So um, it's also going to be a little bit of a lower cost alternative to some of the other properties in South Lake County, simply because Weiss is into it for a great basis. Um, so if you have a business in the area that says, hey, I'm in 4,000 square feet right now of office and I, you know, I'd really love to get to seven or eight, but the, you know, the revenue is not quite there to justify growing into that size of space, uh, this could be a great solution for them because they can jump into a little bit larger space uh, at, a, at a lower price per square foot. So it kind of bridges that gap uh, as that company is growing and, and helps them, you know, stay in Long Grove in the community. Because we know there's a ton of uh, business owners in Long Grove and, um, you know, that they may be operating their business out of office buildings in, you know, Lake Zurich or Vernon Hills or Arlington Heights or wherever it may be nearby. Uh, and we'd love to attract them uh, back to this great property overlooking the lake and uh, Heron Creek. David, what is the website? Because I'm I've been trying to Google it as you've been talking to um, look at the video later. The website is SalemLake.com. Is it possible to put a direct link to that on our EDC website? or even to the video itself, the drone video? Yeah, absolutely. We have a longer version. I can send you the flyer we have for the, the uh, ice skating event that we'd love to. I don't know, do you guys have a separate, I know you were kind of talking about it when I jumped on a separate newsletter for the EDC. Um, that was a topic. Yeah, we're, we don't, <laughs> but we are incorporated into like a flyer that goes out um, versus um, via email blast. Um, and Denise uh, works on that with that for us. Um, so we, I don't, Denise, do you know when the next one comes out? Because it would be great to get that in there. Um, we actually have a meeting tomorrow, or I'm sorry, Wednesday. So that's something that we can bring up. And another thing that we could possibly do is we could add, we for sure can add the flyer. Um, I already have, I think the, we had, we, I think we had dis discussed that, David, of adding the new flyer to the lowest site, our property search site. But we could also probably add within that lowest site, the video. So we could work on that. I think that would be great. Visuals are always great, so. Well, and, um, especially if we can, I think the video is gonna be great. I'd like to see the whole thing. So that's why I wanted to get on the website. The other thing was um, um, just, I think you, I think publicizing your skating event or just so that people can actually, I think a lot of people are curious about what that site looks like because it's been empty for so long. So I think if you, if we can publicize that somehow um, through Long Grove, um, I think maybe that will get a lot of people interested because it's something outdoors that we can do during the pandemic. And I think those of us with kids, I think might be a good opportunity, just A, see something you haven't seen, do something that's fun that you haven't done in a while. And then if you're going to have food trucks, I think that really is going to, you know, get a lot of the, you know, young and old out there to your, but I think we just need to publicize it more in the community. And is that something we can do, Anne and Jen, Jenny, um, at, on the board level? Um, I think that's a, a great <laughs> question. I would, you know, I'm thinking flyers just at sunset, and, um, 
you know, maybe contacting Stevenson even to see if they can put it on their daily digest. Those are the two things that pop up on my head. Um, I think getting it in the email blast would be great. Um, David, are you reaching out beyond Long Grove to other surrounding communities like Buffalo Grove and Arlington Heights? And uh, so what we've primarily done is we've reached out to uh, some people in the real estate community and brokerage community because we obviously want to get the word out that the property is being repositioned with them. Um, but I think that's a good idea, uh, reaching out potentially to Buffalo Grove. Uh, thinking like local park districts, and, uh, you know, yeah. as a recreational opportunity, at, like Jenny said, to get outside is a great opportunity if you've got kids in there. And um, this Go ahead. Uh, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, um, so it, it's very small tactical, but um, because I knew this was coming, I went and had my skates sharpened. So I mentioned it to <laughs> the guy at Twin Rinks. Um, but so you, I mean, you might mention it to Twin Rinks where they do skate sharpening and they certainly have a lot of people who are already interested in skating as well as there's one up in Vernon Hills that does it also on that parkway. He did note the Buffalo Grove Park District does do flooding in Willow at Willow Creek or Willow Stream, uh, weather dependent. So I don't know that it's giant competition, but that's also a potential. So the Park District at Buffalo Grove is already kind of on that. And, you know, they may or may not want to offer an augmented, but it'd be good for Buffalo Go Grove to be aware of it if we could possibly get it communicated that way. That brings up an interesting question, too, because I've talked to a couple of the ice rinks in the area and... Uh, one of the challenges we've had in getting someone to help us with skate rentals has been that, um, I guess, uh, maybe 15 years ago or so, a couple of the ice rinks were doing that and, you know, somebody got hurt at the event and they got sued. So from a liability standpoint, none of the private ones want to touch it. Um, that being said, the ones that are park district owned, of which within maybe a 15 mile radius, only four of the call it 15 ice rinks or park district drone. They're immune, I guess, due to tort law. That's what the guy at Buffalo Grove is explaining to me. Um, and that leads me to the question of, you know, obviously a lot of people do have their skates, but if we can't have a skate rental location, do you think people bringing their own skates and then just kind of coming out to hang out in the refreshments, do you think that's enough of a draw? Or do you guys view that as a, as a problem uh, specifically for the, your residents? I think I'd communicate that it's more than skating because yeah. just showing what you said today, I didn't realize it was more than skating, and that's terrific. Well, it's the PDF. Oh, so, sorry, Jenny. Um, I'm looking at the PDF on your website. The... You're, I think you're on mute. Muted. So, oh, yeah, sorry. But um, I think your your PDF, if we can just use that PDF, I think. Um, cause it lists all your activities. And then if you, when you say music, if you have a, like, if there a band coming, if so, like name the band, cause then you get all the band's followers too. But so just, I mean, that's just an idea. And I think if you, um, you're back on mute. Sorry. <laughs> I think that'll, um, that'll help too. So. Okay. <laughs> Thinking a flyer at Heron's Creek somehow because so many people we were there on Sunday there were a ton of people walking um, and they look at that building I think one of your biggest priorities right now should be somehow linking a path to Heron's Creek there are so many people that look across the lake and see that building I think if you could put a restaurant or a coffee shop in there and get a path you would have Saturday and Sunday people doing their bikes or their walks and stopping by for a cup of coffee. Um, but I, you know, I was surprised it was icy as heck and that place was packed. So I think there might be some sort of place we could post a sign there just to- What, what would the protocol be? Can we just do that? Or is that we would have to ask the forest preserve or is that- um, that That's a good question. <laughs> that's a good question. Um, let me see. I can I can investigate that a little bit. Put a couple flyers up, but you know I, I don't know if there's a protocol where you guys have done stuff like that in the past for events, um, and if there's any other places in town you think would be a good place to post it. Um, you know we were brainstorming where we could post flyers to, and 
obviously, you know, as the previous guest was talking about it, indoor dining is a little tougher. That's where I've seen a lot of stuff at the past in the past, but I don't know if there, are there any other ideas where outdoor areas or somewhere downtown we could post it maybe where stuff gets gets posted from time to time. I think that'd be another avenue perhaps. I really think your email blast is going to be the best. I, I really think because I think most of us, you know, aren't um, those of us that do go downtown, we're trying to, especially when it's so cold, you're not like lingering too long. You kind of get to where you're going to go. But I think the email blast, because I think what we all do read those. Um, so I think that really would be your best bet. I know. Um, I know. Sorry, go ahead. But Sunset has a bulletin board where they post. And I know people are going to the grocery store. So that would be a good place to put up a flyer. Uh, I know Long Grove is fairly well known for their events. So people I've spoken to even outside of Long Grove say, hey, they have that event in the summer and you know in the fall. And um, what are the venues that the village uses to push some of the other events? The, the HLGDBA, the Historic Long Grove Downtown Business Association has a website and uh, they push out email to a large mailing list I can't imagine they wouldn't cooperate in terms of letting people know, because even though it's a little bit north of the village, it still brings people up this way. So we'll get on that. And um... okay, I've had some conversations obviously with uh, Mr. Kopecki, who's on that uh, downtown association board. We'll probably could reach back out to him to see how often email us. Sounds good. Um, so, um, David and Justin and Avi, so what's the minimum you said, um, just talking about your, um, just going back to the office itself. So you're going to have some office users and you're going to have, uh, possibly a restaurant you said. And so, um, so from an office perspective, like what's the, you said 4,000 square feet is at the lowest in terms of a square footage. And then how high do you go and can someone expand? I mean, what are, you know, are, do you have, and, and you said you had lower rates. So if you can kind of. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah. Um, so 4,000, I was kind of using that as an example of if there's a business in 4,000 trying to get to seven or eight, but it's a little expensive to make the jump and they need a quality property, you know, we're, we're a little lower cost. So depending on the quality of the building, if you go for like along Milwaukee Avenue, all the office parks there, typically they're at 25 to $30 gross, even a little bit higher than that for some of the class A stuff. Um, you know, we're asking $20 a square foot gross now, and this will be, you know, a very high end finishes when it's finished. Um, you know, the first tenant, candidly, if we got a, we got a bigger one, we could probably get a little bit more aggressive than that for the first tenant to kind of kick off the building and get some activity going. Um, but 7,000 square feet would kind of be the low end, just with the way the building divides up and needing to have exits for, um, you know, fire and things like that. Um, everybody can kind of have their own private entrance, even though it's two stories, the way the parking garage lays out, it lays out really nicely that on the second floor, everybody can even walk straight in from that parking garage into their private entrance as well. So, um, you know, versus, you know, a downtown office building of the same size that's vertical instead of horizontal, everybody's waiting in the elevator. So there's not really that um, you know, a point where funnel point where everybody comes together and there's a lot of traffic and activity. Um, everybody also will have their own outdoor space with the units because there's little kind of pods inside the building that we can build them out. So 7,000 square feet is kind of the smallest we'd go on the higher end. We can do up to 120,000 square feet. Um, Avi, there's actually some third floor space, we could go a little bit bigger if somebody needed some storage, correct? That we're, we're not really marketing at the moment because it doesn't have windows, um, but we- Yeah. How big is that? There is about a third of the building. So approximately between 10, well, it's, it's a, over 20,000 square feet of the building, but the actual usable space is probably closer to like 10 to 15,000 square feet in the attic, which um, CF Industries had actually used as office space had offices built out there with skylights and whatnot we're kind of looking at that as just you know supplementary storage or whatnot but it is available and, and the basement as well and we've also got a ton of land there so if somebody wanted to expand or wanted expansion rights to do more buildings and really make it a corporate campus if somebody needed 120 right away and 
they think they might need 30 in four or five years, you know, there's room to do it uh, out there as there's a lot of land that's uh, currently unused or, you know, is great amenity space. Um, you know, we could get really creative out there. If a tenant came in and they said, hey, corporate culture is really important and we want to put out some tennis courts and a basketball court or, you know, beach sand volleyball, that's something we could potentially build out for them. So having the lake and having the extra land makes it really unique. I think if there were any other users looking to, uh, you know, open up a business in Long Grove that was maybe more of a, maybe it's like a, a tennis club or a volleyball club or something along those lines. I mean, you know, Weiss Properties could even do a build to suit on some of the extra land. So the primary focus is really on the building right now, but there, there is the ability, I think, to do some other things on the excess land. Um, and if there's a one large company that comes in and really wants to make it a corporate campus, there's room to expand over the years as well, uh, built right in, so. I think you're, um, oh, go ahead, Abby. Hey, no, I just want to jump in real quick with a couple points before um, they slip my mind, honestly. Um, so first of all, as far as just the, um, the building and kind of the background, um, I do think that there are a bunch of factors that kind of work in our favor here, um, which I definitely want to kind of bring to the forefront of, of your guys' attention and, and when you guys are talking to potential businesses. Uh, Long Grove, I believe we're actually the only property in the entire Long Grove that's zoned purely office. When we're looking at the map, there's one that's zoned OX, which is like um, research, but we're pretty much the only office zoned property in the whole village. And Long Grove, uh, what we noticed, and this is part of what attracted us to the property, is there are a lot of highly educated decision makers that live in the area. And all of them are either commuting all the way downtown for work or somewhere close to the highway, which A, is a longer commute, uh, B, during COVID, they have that whole elevator dilemma downtown, and frankly, C, that's not bringing more jobs to Long Grove. That's just, you know, bringing more jobs elsewhere and having all the, the decision makers communicate out of Long Grove to work. So what, what we see as kind of the big draw here is saying, hey, you live in Long Grove anyway. It's such a phenomenal community to live. Why not work here as well? Why not have a, you know, seven minute commute to work Today, people have so many, you know, so many people have cars. They're going to, you know, the employees will come to, if you're signing their paychecks, they'll follow you pretty much wherever you go, you know, and it's really a 30 minute commute from the city. It's, it's, it's not anything more than people are used to commuting anyway. The proximity to the decision makers home, um, the lower rent when compared to pretty much any other uh, competing product in the market. And the huge amount of outdoor space with direct access to the office and complete HVAC control, which is a very COVID friendly environment, just has all the arrows pointing in the same direction that says, hey, if you're going to open a business or if you're going to relocate a business or grow a business, this is the place to do it. And it just makes sense. Um, and that's kind of where we're trying to you know, push. Uh, and the, the advantage is it just brings more people to the area. I mean, millennials, you know, I'm a millennial and I'm married with kids now and I just bought a house. You know, people are, they live downtown. That's fun and all. But as you get older, you want the backyard to walk your dog. You want the good neighborhood school and all that. And they're going to start moving out of the city into the suburbs. And I think, hey, if you're, you know, a highly educated, motivated, great millennial that's looking for a community to settle down in, there's a great company that's in Long Grove. Why don't I just move to Long Grove? You know, I mean, your guys' backyards are the size of like my whole block. I live in the city, you know, it, it's great. So I think that's a huge attraction to bring people to the area. And that's kind of what our focus is on. It's a little bit contrarian because everyone's scared of office space now because everyone's working from home, but there will be a core amount of office space that's always going to be needed. And if the market shrinks overall by 20%, but you're in that most desirable 80%, you're still going to thrive. You know, and, and we're just, it's just going to be a consolidation, but the market will always be there. So that's kind of the, the main attraction. Uh, and the bottleneck has always been, I mean, we've done this in the past where we'll take a property, we'll revitalize it. The big bottleneck is getting the word out. So we have some properties in Skokie. We live right in the area. We're well kind of integrated in that community and the getting the word out was easy. Uh, Long Grove was a little bit of a new area for us. You know, I don't, I don't live in the area and we weren't that integrated in it. Um, so the big push that we need help for, which is, you know, is getting the word out. And that's kind of part of what the whole ice skating event is, is saying, hey, guys, I know you've seen this property for years and you kind of maybe, you know, wrote it off or already have your preconceived notions about it. But we're really doing something new and fun over here. And we're trying to get as many eyeballs on the property as possible. And people that maybe weren't even considering moving, 
you know, they may not have called the real estate agent saying, Hey, I'm looking to relocate my office. They may think we're perfectly content and happy here. But just like when Steve Jobs invented the iPhone, no one knew they needed that. And then he invented it. They saw it and said, wow, I want one, you know? So getting the word out about this is something we're really trying to push pretty much through all avenues possible of saying there is a better product out there that's better, cheaper, and a great location. So it's definitely something worth considering. Um, and the last thing, not to toot our own horn, but we are, we're landlords that kind of think a little bit differently than other traditional real estate landlords. And we try to make it fun and cool. And just a couple examples of kind of how we, you know, we try to approach things hands-on as if we were tenants, we're a small company. So above me is the owner and every tenant has my cell phone number directly. There's not a lot of red tape involved. We're very transparent and that's kind of how we like to do things. Um, in the recent COVID, like pretty much in March, April, just as COVID was coming out of last year, we immediately hired two consultants that were basically specializing in PPP funding and some of the other uh, loans eligible for small businesses. We pushed out their contact information to all of our tenants. So instead of waiting for them to say, hey, we're running a financial difficulty, we said, look, here are some tools, here are these consult consultants, speak to them. And they got a lot of our tenants set up with getting through the loan applications, kind of advising them on what are some of the best strategies, here are your options, and really held their hand throughout the whole process. And for a lot of these small companies that are overwhelmed with the situation on the ground to begin with, you know, this resource was hugely helpful in kind of walking them through the process, getting them the funds they needed. And we haven't had a single tenant that went out of business and shut their doors uh, permanently. We've had a few, like some of our gym tenants have obviously closed on temporarily. We're working with them, but we try to be proactive and, and we try to be a little bit fun, a little bit out of the box. Um, another example is we had a tenant that uh, is a printing company. So they've been around forever. Um, and we just for fun went bought, you know, online, we found this vintage printing press. It's got to be, I don't know, 100, 150 years old. It's this massive piece of equipment we had delivered to their front door. We printed a customized logo with that company on it. And it sits in the lobby of our hall of the building now. And when customers walk in, they see that they're like, wow, that's super cool. And that's something we just did for the fun of it. You know, um, we just bought the food truck, which will be bringing around some of the properties where we can serve kind of fun and different fresh food uh, as it comes about. Um, we have annual summer barbecues for all of our tenants. In the springtime, we have complimentary car cleaning service as people try to kind of do their spring cleaning. Um, you know, we'll have people at the building, you pull your car up, they clean the cars for you and there's no charge. That's, that's something we swallow. So we try to do fun things that are a little bit outside the box. Um, and we certainly are more of a hands-on type of landlord instead of just saying, hey, you know, refer to the local property manager and I'm sorry, I can't help or whatever. So um, we're looking for ways to make this fun. And kind of what that leads me to is if there are any events that the village of Longo is looking to host anyway, um, we would love, love, love to be a part of that. So, and, and, you know, we would do that just to kind of open up our gates to the community saying, Hey, come on in and, and check what we got. So whether it's drive-in movie night or an outdoor stand of comedy show where people are doing a lot of, you know, shows in parking lots nowadays and Hey, we have the land for it or any other, whether you guys are looking to start a farmer's market, which I know are really popular, um, we have a huge parking lot. We have a ton of grounds, really nice scenery. We would love to share that, you know, and, and kind of make use of that for the general public. So it's not just a corporate office building. It's actually a, a cool, fun place to be for pretty much anyone. When's your um, expected opening date then? Or when do you, when do you think um, it's going to be habitable or? So we're working through a couple different phases now. One of the largest investments is actually not the prettiest because the tenants don't really see it on the front end, but it's in the mechanical systems. And, and especially for COVID, uh, the building originally had one central HVAC system that basically serviced the entire building. We're going to be installing dozens and dozens of individual smaller units throughout. So essentially every single tenant has their direct, not only zone control, but control over their entire HVAC system. So if they want to implement certain safety protocols, like, you know, replace the filters more regularly, advance filtration, maximize outside air intake, things like that, they have the full control. That's taken a little bit of time. Um, so we're still kind of working on some of the mechanical backgrounds. We're getting the wells uh, fixed and up and running, uh, redoing the HVAC. Um, ComEd had some issues at the property, keeping the electricity flowing smoothly. They're doing some work out there. So we're doing some of the background work now. We've already, for the most part, designed our spec space, which in, in office kind of jargon that, that really just means 
uh, an office space that you build out in advance to showcase what the space could look like. So when you do a walkthrough, tenants can take a look or potential tenants and they'll say, okay, cool. I get it. That's what it could look like. That's kind of a teaser of what your space will look like. So we have all that design. We're just waiting for some of the mechanical elements to kind of fall into place. You know, and we can't really do showings in the winter without the heat on, for example, you know, so things like that we're working through. Our target is likely mid 2021 to start doing some of the early showings um, with anticipated actual move in date by a tenant of sometime mid to end of 2021. That's kind of our target. We were set back a bit. We closed mid March 2020 and then COVID hit like a week later. <laughs> so kind of set us back in our timeline a bit, but that's the market. That's kind of the timeline we're targeting, which as far as getting the word out lines up nicely, a lot of the tenants, you know, if you're over seven to 10,000 square feet, if you're, you know, 10 to 20,000, their horizon is typically 12 to 18 months out that, you know, they'll start looking for space that far in advance because the build up process takes time, the moving process takes time and all the associated logistics. So we're really trying to get the word out now so that when the building is ready for moving, we theoretically should have, you know, the tenants lined up with the leases in place and everything. Great, thank you. Any other questions or? <laughs> I'm super excited about the space. Um, I am thrilled that you chose Long Grove. Um, I think I just see it as like this huge untapped potential and I'm, I'm really, really excited for it. So, and everyone I've talked to about it has been pretty interested. And in, um, so I, I like the idea of linking to your website. Um, I think getting the word out on this event um, coming up this end of the month will be something we work on pretty hard the next few days. Um, but, um, Anne Kritzmeier, a trustee, she has already um, expressed an interest in getting a tour. So maybe you guys could hook up that. I don't know. I really thought it was cool. So if any of you guys have an opportunity to take part in that, um, I would encourage you. Um, I'd, be, I'd be interested in too. Yeah, you would, you should go. Uh, I'd love to see it. I'd love to see it. it. You'll be, I was so impressed when we drove in and saw the space and I, it was like Hamilton Partners, pardon my mentioning their name. Uh, <laughs> uh, they spend a ton of money on their lobbies down on Lake Cook Road to make them look impressive. This place, the minute you drive in, you look at that beautiful piece of architecture and you go, this is an impressive spot. You may be below market and rates, but you look like the absolute top in class. So I think that uh, you could find a lot of people that have, my thought was you, you should talk to big downtown law firms that are looking for satellite offices. It's gonna be a great place to bring clients locally and not have to take them downtown and um, say, we're- uh, Roger, that is spot on because I think um, I'm helping my clients right now looking at, um, from larger corporate, big elevator buildings and major metros moving to outside kind of collar counties, I mean, across the country, but um, it's because they're all freaked out about the elevator still. And so a lot of them are moving back into the hub and spoke type of real estate operation that we used to have back in the day, you know, 20 years ago, um, 10 years ago even. So I think, um, I really think, especially when you guys mentioned David and Avi, when you mentioned the each individual, well, each individual HVAC system plus each individual um, entrance and exit, I think is huge. The having to not go into a, a you know a central elevator bank to get to your location, I think is going to be phenomenal, and especially post COVID. So, I really, I, I'm yeah. really excited. So I'd love to look at it. Yeah, I yeah, think I, it's, I, I think it's a great opportunity. I, I agree with Roger and with Mina. You know, satellite law firms. CPA firms, um, you could just see uh, anyone who, you know, would have use for something like that with a private entrance and um, facilities that just that just is 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 wonderful as an option. Maybe yeah. finding a date to get everybody out there <laughs> would be great today. If... On the Salem Lake website, you'll see um... David's information, I believe mine is up there as well. Reach out to us and we'd certainly love to set up a showing uh, and a tour and, you know, for whoever wants to join, you know, the more the merrier. 
definitely give you guys a little bit of a runabout of you know what we have going on there. Um, we are we are in the process of ordering actually a golf cart just to make it kind of more fun. And the building's so big and empty, we're actually good planning on driving it up the to the parking deck and actually through the building, <laughs> give people <laughs> kind of a little more of a fun experience uh, on the tour. Um, the other thing is it's kind of cool. And, and if you're talking to people, well, you guys check it out yourself and it might be worth sharing. Uh, if you go to weissproperties.com, that's our company website. It has a little bit of history about some of our past projects. Uh, and the menu, if you go to where it says about Weiss and then click on that menu and, and just click on development. If you scroll down, you can see some really cool before and after photos of some of our past projects where you can actually slide the bar back and forth on the same view to show what it looked like when we bought it versus what it looks like now. And it's, it's pretty striking. And, and, you know, we've taken some pretty horrendous looking before photos of this property <laughs> and we can't wait to show you guys the, the final product, but certainly anytime you guys want to come take a tour, that'd be wonderful. And if you guys want to Jennifer's point, if you guys want to put something on the calendar right now that works for all of you throughout a couple of dates, we can get it on the book. I'm happy to go out there multiple times too. Uh, to Abby's point, it's, you know, they're still doing some cleanup there. So it's in rough shape, but I, you know, I think we can kind of share the vision and, and just seeing some of the views of the lake, uh, you know, and, and the old, uh, you know, timber trusses of the building, you, you know, you can see that the bones are good and there's a lot of potential there. And then we can even show, I think, you got, Abby, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think you have some maybe uh, pictures of some of the design features you're going to use in the spec space. Perhaps we can show as well. Um, that'll get rolling here later in the year. I'm just, yeah, yeah, I, I can have those emailed out. Go ahead. I'm just thinking because if the, um, more than two of us attend, it has to be noticed to the public. Um, so... And I, I do think some of the other board members would be interested. And in if we publicly listed it as an, uh, you know, that this was going to happen, um, maybe it makes sense to try and do it during a normal meeting time. I don't know, 7 a.m. on a <laughs> morning is kind of a, a stiff thing. But I mean, if we post, if if more than two of us are going to be there, we have to post it. So. Oh, what, why don't we do it? I mean, what, if you, if you public post it, why don't we say like, you know, nine o'clock after one of our Tuesday morning meetings and then, you know, and that way it's publicly posted and all of us can drive out there after our call. That works for me. So yeah, that's a good idea. So I don't know what, maybe, um, and we should, I think we should just throw a date out. <laughs> how about the next, how about the next one? I mean, I mean, are you available? February 9. Oh, January 26th. No, I was I was jumping to February 9th. Give us a little more time to get. Uh... Yeah, that's, I think that's good. The only thing I like about the 26th is that we would also have that weekend after would be another open event for the ice skating. But I don't, I mean, I could, maybe that's separate. Yeah. I'm open for either day. Abby, do you have any conflicts or preferences depending on what you guys are doing work-wise? No, both of them both work for me just fine. So Roger, what, do you have a preference? Uh, I, my thought is we'll just do the regular agenda and then we'll say that we'll, we're going to adjourn to uh, my thought is I need to talk to somebody uh, like Bill or possibly even the village attorney about how to phrase this or set it up because <clears throat> yeah, there, if we have a meeting supposedly uh, we have to record it somehow or I, oh I didn't think of that so I don't uh, know that you I don't I don't know if you have to do that but yeah that, that's a good point Roger to, to figure that out because this group let's, has let's, done tours before but COVID was different yeah. Um, I have to jump off, but I'm. Thank you so much, Avi, David, and Justin for joining. But and hopefully we'll see you on the tour. But I have another call, client call. I need to get on. So thanks. Thank all. you. Thank you, Mina. So why don't we do a little research on our end, and then we'll get back to you. But actually, the 26th of the February 3rd is our aim, our goal. So um, if anything changes on your end, um, let us know if one of those dates, you know, become unavailable. But let us do a little research and then we'll try to turn it up. Yeah, let us know. 
great. So I think Denise is really awesome about putting together a checklist of everything that we're supposed to be working on. But um, I will I will get on um, contacting the park district uh, or the Parents Creek about potentially putting up signs and get back to you on that. So is I don't know if this is specifically Long Grove related um, as far as like like the, the village, but it, do you guys know about any whether it's a forum or outlet? to um, publicize directly to a the um, Stevenson High School parent body and or maybe local Long Grove Facebook groups for where parents are maybe looking for, hey, what's something I, you know, every Sunday as a parent myself with toddlers, especially in the winter, finding and containing ways to keep the kids occupied is, it's a weekly task that's <laughs> not fun, no, you know, it's hard. So having this fun, cool event where, hey, it's something new we can do with the family on a weekend might be great. If you guys know of any maybe local Facebook groups or other things that might be worth kind of reaching out to, uh, that'd be great. I know that Stevenson puts out a daily digest. I think Jim Conroy is the contact there um, and they put out blurbs. Um, so I think that would be a great person to check with. Um, I, there are like neighbor, I. I'm not on social media, so I'm not <laughs> great with this stuff, but I know that there are little like um, neighbor, next door neighbor. Um, so I, I can ask my neighbor about how you would post on that because I know she has posted in the past, but I, yeah, I think there are social media things out there. I'm just, I'm not a great resource for that. There's something called the patch in different communities, but I don't know if it's just news or if it's social. So you may want to check on it. It's by different communities. Okay. Yeah. But definitely, um, we, uh, we can put you in the next blast that goes out to all of the Long Grove residents. Um, yeah, but, that's good. Perfect. Okay. Um, Do you want to bring up Arlington Toyota or wait until you talk at the board tonight? Um, well, I, um, first of all, thank you guys for joining us. <laughs> we'll be in touch. Oh, yeah. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, I'm going to hop off now, but thank you for your time, guys. Have a wonderful day, everyone. Yeah. You um, so I think... Uh, I think it's worth bringing up. I think I talked to Ann um, and we kind of went back to board. Is this something for the board to, to, to talk about or maybe the EDC? I, th I think we both concurred that EDC was probably the better venue to um, bring them in and talk to about it. Um, I will obviously bring it up tonight, um, but he hasn't responded back to me when I, I sent out, you know, the, the invitation to, you know, tell us if you're free to join us and I haven't heard back from him. But anyway, um, the co-owner of Arlington Toyota reached out to the board and said, you know, he, he's heard about the TIF. He's sad to see how Log Grove been, has been in decline. He has some great ideas that he would like to share with us. He said that he was part of some brainstorming thing that happened. I don't know anything about that. Was that something, I'm sure it was pre me, but did you? Yeah, some time ago. Okay, so um, I think it's appropriate to invite him to hear what he has to say, but. Well, I think it's better to have him here because we can just be an ear and he can't push us to say, well, you said this or you said that because we can't make the decisions. Yeah, I agree. Um, so I will, I'll talk to the board tonight, but that's my inclination. Okay. Sounds good. Interesting to say the least. Yes, yes. Yeah. All um, right. Any other new business? Motion to adjourn. Anybody? I move we adjourn today's meeting. I Act second it. Any opposed? Oh, very good. Uh, we got through a lot of stuff this way. I am uh, great meeting, really. Oh, uh, you, you really wow. did have a lot of good stuff there. I, 
at Salem Lake, I think it's going to be a, a great development. Anyway, get in that car. All right. <laughs> <That's yours. laughs> say, hello to Saint, say hello to St. Paul for us. I will. <laughs> Take care. Bye-bye.